Hi everyone, I'm George Cow, and I'm excited to be here with Patty Kay, the one and only Patty Kay. Um, Patty, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited about this. Yeah, me too. So we're going to be talking about marketing, especially for self-employed professionals. And let me just go ahead and share Patty's background with you all, and then we'll jump into uh, some very helpful topics about marketing. So Patty Kay helps self-employed professionals, you know, especially coaches, consultants, and experts, get their unique contribution and genius out of their heads into the world. She uses a combination of coaching, consulting, and wordsmithing to help people organize their thoughts and articulate their big ideas. Her superpower is in taking heaps of rambling info and distilling it into succinct and understandable messaging. So this is great, Patty, and um, uh, and you have a uh, you have actually a, a kind of a podcast or online class business talk show. Um, that's really cool too. And I'll be sure to put the, put the link in the notes below, but I wanted to ask you about a couple things that you like to discuss with clients. One of them is the idea of a target market. We've all heard this idea of what is your target market? You know, that's a very common, uh, phrase in marketing, target market, targeting people. <laughs> Tell me what you think about that. Uh, not much. Uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of um, a lot of marketing language because I find it's dehumanizing. So for my clients, uh, coaches, consultants, experts, they're in relationship businesses. Their clients are people. And so much of the marketing language that we hear is about target markets. It's about leads and prospects. I had a client call them suspects at one point. It's very dehumanizing, othering. It's not about having um, a relationship with people or even remembering that these people are people and that your future clients are going to be actual human beings that you have a relationship with and that you like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, I, I love that. Um, and it's a good reminder for me too, because, you know, <clears throat> one of the things of course I, I do a lot is run Facebook ads and things like that. And and in the ad platforms, they use the word targeting uh, as, as a very common thing. They use funnels too, and they, they use all kinds of you know, conventional language. And it is important to think, yes, if I'm talking to real human beings who have wants and needs, they have, they, you know, and, and in some cases they're, they're hurting, they're suffering. Um, there's things that I can really, uh, there's something that I know, there's something that I can help them with that can really make a change in their life. Like it is such an honor to realize that that is the role that we can play in someone's life is to be of, of real benefit to them. And it's like, yeah, when we do that, then it's marketing takes on a different feel. It's like, oh, it's about connecting, right? So, yeah. so the other thing that I, yeah. um, I, the way I kind of rephrase it or invite my clients to look at it differently is to think about future clients. So rather than thinking about your target market or your target audience, it's about your future clients, which is a different sort of a mindset because for one thing, it shows that they actually exist. Like your future clients are, they're inevitable. If you're going to have a successful business, you're going to have clients. Those clients are here, they're alive, they're, they need what you have to offer. They want what they want to hear from you. They're going to pay you, they're going to hire you because they're your future clients. And when you look at that as a, you know, a distinct group of people that are very similar to your current clients, uh, it, I think it changes how we look at marketing. It's less about how do I find people, convince and convert and persuade. And it's more about how do I get in touch with these people who are going to who are destined to buy from me. I love that. Yes, they are. They are. They are destined to buy from you because of the right fit. Right. Um, so that actually, I want to, I want to jump to that, that, that question that I had for you, which is, um, you know, you just mentioned convince and persuade. So tell us about that. I mean, uh, most of the time when we learn marketing, one of the common you know, topics is persuasion psychology. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to learn how to find ways to trick their brain into somehow hypnotizing them, right, <laughs> into buying from me. I mean, literally, um, you know, there is a whole branch of marketing called neuromarketing, mm -hmm. which is 
learning how to manipulate others' brains so that they buy from you. So what are your thoughts on that? I hate that. <laughs> I, I, re I really have a problem with it. There's a lot of psychologically manipulative marketing um, kind of strategies and tactics that are being taught. Um, and I think that, you know, this fits in with this idea of dehumanizing is that we, you know, we lose any kind of care and respect for people um, when we're trying to get them to do things that they don't want to do. And, you know, once again, coaches and consultants, these are helping professionals. And, and it, you know, even when you look at coaching and it's like one of these foundational ideas about coaching is that is that we are all capable and resourceful and we have our own answers and we should have uh, the ability to make good decisions for ourselves and that that's really important. And we're taught that in coaching school, not to influence people and yet, seems like all bets are off when it comes to the marketing that it's okay like it's 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 it justifies um the the means are justified by the end I, I, you know i had somebody say oh i'll do anything in the marketing so that i can give that person a transformation and it's like is that actually really true <laughs> yeah i'm so glad you're saying this yeah it, it is it's it's always shocking to me how heart-based you know, business owners and professionals, they, they can, they, they see the sacredness of the work they do with clients or the, the sort of the, yeah, the relational aspects, the healing aspects. And then, like you said, when it comes to marketing, all bets are off. Like, why, why is there such a disconnect? And I think there's a disconnect to me is be, of course, it's because partly because of fear, right? It's like, oh, if I don't, if I don't do the things that the marketing experts are telling me that I do, that's the right way of doing marketing to get clients. I want to, I don't want to, I don't want, I want to give it the best. I've also heard this. I want to give it the best chance, right? Like want to give, give it the best chance that people will work with me. Why would I not do that? Because I believe in my work. Once they, however they get to me, once they get to me, then the healing begins. Then, the, then the transformation begins. Then the goodness of my, you know, spirit and soul, <laughs> it can be there, but the marketing, yeah, do, do whatever you need to do, marketer. <laughs> so how, yeah, yeah that, I love this. And, and so, so, so tell me more than if, if you're coming to it from um, a more ethical point of view. Now, one of the things, of course, you do is copywriting for people, right? Or helping people with the, with the words. So first of all, what is copywriting? What, why, why are words important? And then we can get into how we can do this without having to strong arm people and, and things like that. Yeah, well, the, the copy, copywriting is your marketing, um, you know, it's, it's marketing words that you use uh, typically, like, you know, your website copy, your advertising copy. I'll even extend that to uh, content marketing, sharing your expertise. There's an element of copywriting in it, um, in that it is meant to be a marketing piece and you're writing it in order to attract your ideal clients and show them how you can be of service to them. So that's, that's the copyright. It's, I look at it as pretty much any place that you use words in your business is kind of a marketing opportunity. And uh, copywriting is a way of looking at that as um, uh, what do you need to uh, tell your potential clients, explain to your potential clients, how do you connect with your potential clients uh, to let them know that what you have to offer can help them in some way. Uh, that's my perspective for copywriting. So it's, it's words. <laughs> yeah, totally. And um, I think some some of us you know know of course how important the words are and that could bring a, a level of performance anxiety in there it's like okay now i have to be poetic or, or i have to be really persuasive and like oh my god i have i know i only have 10 seconds with them how do i you know make them stay on this page kind of kind of feel um what's your perspective i mean you've you've done so much marketing writing for clients and for yourself. What's your take on that? Um, I think we put the emphasis on the wrong things. We're wanting to be cute and clever and catchy, um, uh, creative, uh, completely and totally different from everyone else that we do. And the focus is always uh, you know, on ourselves. This is what I do. This is how I do it. This is why it's different than what other people do. This is how it's better. And this is all of the, this is what we want to share with people. But what they really want to hear is 
are you the right person for me? Can you help me with this problem that I'm struggling with? Or can you help me get this result that I'm looking for? And they want to be able to clearly and easily understand that. And they're not actually interested in any of the differences or the variances or how you do what you do until you show them that you can help them. And the biggest copywriting secret in the world is that your, your clients are going to tell you you what to say when you're in your sessions with clients when you're doing you know especially in a discovery call in the beginning and you ask them you know like what's going on why did you you know why are we having this call what what attracted you to this what you know what are you looking for they're going to tell you straight out and you just write down all of that stuff and put that on your copy and, and they will tell you and they will use plain language and they will use language that is meaningful to them and you just you share that language back out and that makes you easier to find, easier to understand, um, and, and you reach them. Um, so that, that's my perspective on all this. So when you do that, you don't have to be persuasive and manipulative. You, 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 you're being empathetic. You're showing that you understand. The biggest compliment you can get is like, oh, I was reading your stuff and it was like you were inside my head. Um, it shows understanding and empathy. It's, it's actually really beautiful, really helpful. Your 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 copy can be part of the, the goodness that you put into the world. Uh, it's really great. I, I love how simply you put that. Yes, it's like talk to them, hear why they're why they're reaching out to someone like you. Um, now let's talk about a situation where, okay, well, uh, maybe somebody is just starting out and they haven't had discovery calls yet. That's one possibility. Another possibility is that maybe people have had discovery calls, but they have forgotten <laughs> what's been said in there. So, so um, well, let's just say that somebody doesn't have quick and ready access to a discovery call that's being scheduled today or tomorrow or whatever. Um, any other tips? How, how, how can we do this? I don't know, maybe it's talking to one's friends, but, but yeah, any, any encouragement there? It's a couple of ideas. Um, one is, you know, to kind of use your imagination, and this is it's a little bit tricky, but to try to look at the situation from the outside in and to, and to look at what you're offering and go, okay, so how can this help people? And how will they know that they need this help? What are the symptoms that they're experiencing? I often give my clients an exercise. It's like, pretend that you're, um, you're, you know, listening in, you're a fly on the wall, and they are having a, a close conversation with somebody, and they're, you know, and they're, they're talking about what's going on. And, you know, what are they saying to their friend? How, you know, what are they complaining about? And what is the actual language that they're going to use, like real people language? Um, you know, what are they, what are they complaining about? You know, maybe it's a coffee shop, maybe it's, it's a pub, and they've had a couple of glasses of wine. Um, you know, but what are, you know, how are they expressing the problem? Like, what makes you want to kind of swoop in from the fly on the wall, swoop in and land on the table and say, hey, I can help with that? <laughs> yeah. That's really, really good. Yes. And um, so this thing, what you just, you just said about how the marketing copy, so many of us go into our own story, like, like the homepage or the, or wherever, whenever we share about our work, it's so much about our own story, but you just said that, well, maybe they don't care so much about that until they know that you can help them. And I, I love that because it's that old saying, it's like, people don't care what you know until they know that you care, right? We're like we've, we've all heard that before. And what you're just saying is like, okay, that's true in writing your website or your social media profile or whatever, wherever people are discovering your work is that, can you show that you care, not just about yourself and your own story, right? Like, can you show that you care by, by the fact that you understand what they're going through, like what, what they're needing, right? So tell us more about that, like, because it's, it happens so often, I see it all the time. It's like, how can we make that shift more? One of the things that we can do is just think, like, it's all, the, the, the key to all of this is to put yourself in the client's shoes. And it, even just think about this, like how you, like if you're gonna create your website, think about how you would buy and what you would look like, look for when you go to a website, right? And the first thing, like, we don't want to waste our time and we're not interested. Like, this is kind of a strategic kind of a thing. It's like, you go to a website and the first thing you want to know is, am I in the right place? Can, can this, 
is this the answer that I'm looking for, right? And it's kind of like, just to use a, a simple example, like let's say it's, it, you're looking for a mechanic and you have a certain kind of car. The first thing you wanna know is do you fix the kind of car that I have? And do you fix the kind of car problem that I'm having? I don't need to know about your certifications or how you're better than the mechanic down the street because until I know that you can fix my car with the problem that my car is having, I don't care about that stuff. Now, once I know that you can, you know, that you work with my kind of car and you work with the kind of clunk clunk noise that it's making, um, then I want to know the other stuff. Now, now I want to know, okay, who are you? What, you know, are you honest? Are you ethical? Am I going to like you? Are you qualified to do the work that you're doing? Like, that's when I care. But, but until I know that you can actually help me solve my problem, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, it's like people imagine going to a mechanics website and the, the first thing they say is, well, let me tell you when I decided to become a mechanic, you know, <laughs> I had this, I went to the mountaintop and I had this experience and God spoke to me and said, you need to be a mechanic. And that's why today I'm a mechanic. <laughs> it's like, wait, but do you service Hondas? Do you work with, a, do you work with this kind of Ford car? I mean, I <laughs> like, I'd like to know that, you know, and, and do you, do you work with suspension issues or whatever it is? Like, that's what I'm dealing with. I think I'm not even sure, you know, can you help me figure it out? Right. And, and that's, that's a really good example too, is right. Like suspension issues. Like, do we know that it's a suspension issue or do we know that, you know, like it's really bumpy when we're driving over bumps or something like that, or like, we know that it goes clunk, clunk, clunk. We know that it doesn't run and it's just, then they give all like, you know, the laundry list of things that could be going wrong with it. It's all mechanical terms and jargon that we don't understand. And that, you know, from a consumer's pr perspective, that kind of gives the, it feels inapproachable. It's like, I'm not sure this person actually speaks the language that I speak. I'm not sure that they're going to listen to me and understand. Am I going to feel foolish when I go in and start talking about clunk, clunk, clunk? Um, like, you know, what, what if the, the site says, hey, is your car making weird noises? Is it, you know, did it stop running? Does it have this kind of problem? And then you can go, yes, yes. And here's somebody who speaks my language. I can understand them. They can help me. Yeah, that's so great. And speaking the language is exactly right. It's like, yeah, it's like if I if I don't read Greek and I go to websites Greek, it's like, <laughs> it's like it's, and but that's how so many of us do it. We use very transformational and flowery language because it sounds good to us. It sounds poetic to us. But no client has ever said those things to us, right? No client actually uses the, the but yeah. So thank you so much for saying that. So I, I'd love to just kind of hear more about the way that you do your work with clients um, and those who are watching. I'm sure some of you are, are interested in um, kind of working, maybe working more with Patty. So, um, so I know, you know, yeah, just kind of start from a client comes to you. Um, what do you typically help them with and how do you, how, how do you help them with that? Yeah. Uh, well, the clients I specialize in are the ones that have a really hard time explaining what they do. Okay. It's, they they are um, when faced it's a lot with of people the, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of people who do coaching and consulting work yeah. because it's hard to explain. Right. Um, you know, it's not you know it's not as easy. Bookkeeping is easy to explain. Everyone knows what it is. Right. Me mechanic um, even is easy to explain, right? <laughs> a mechanic is easy to explain. They might try and push you away with all that jargon, but you're still going to go there, right? Um, but when you talk about coaching and consulting, it, it's more difficult to sell. And I think that this isn't acknowledged enough um, in marketing circles, is yeah. that it is harder to sell than bookkeeping. So it, it's hard to encapsulate what you do, especially if you do multiple things. Um, if you're in... Um, if you offer a service that people are not familiar with or that practitioners do in a different way, coaching is not a one size fit all term. Every coach coaches differently. Um, they work with different clients. They, they work on different areas of their life. They have a different approach. Like it's all different. Um, so immediately that's more difficult to explain. People don't necessarily know that they need a coach or a consultant. They just know that they have a problem going on. Um, so it does, it is difficult to explain. Um, so you can't, my clients can't put their, their description into a 30 second networking introduction, or they can't come up with the home, the headline for their home page to, you know, succinctly summarize what they do. They find themselves kind of rambling on when they're talking to people, not being able to fully express themselves. They have uh, situations where they know they can help somebody, but they just can't get the information across in a way that makes sense to them. 
um, and, and you know stuck trying to figure out how to write write their write their copy or their or their content. Like those are my favorite clients to work with. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's that's, that's the, what I specialize in. That is so that is such helpful work. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's so helpful to hear. I mean, of course, and not surprisingly, you're good at describing. <laughs> what it is that you do and so all right so now that this person and oh also i maybe a, a related or maybe not related you could tell me if this is too much to get into but what about somebody who says well um i i i, I have several different things that i do Love you know that. really yes tell, that's, tell that's, us more yeah my my process by the way is to I, i'm not really sure exactly how i do it but I, when I work with a client, I ask a lot of questions. I listen, like, and I'm not talking about, you know, fill in my questionnaire and we'll have a, you know, a 45 minute consultation. I, I often take hours with my clients, uh, letting them tell me everything, everything about what they've done. I ask questions about their clients and about um, the kind of, uh, you know, to, for them to give me examples of their work. I will read all of the stuff that they send me. Uh, I've read, you know, here, here's, you know, 20,000 words that I've written. And I just, I just take it all in. I take it all in, take it all in. And in the like, I can't help somebody write their messaging unless I get what they do. So I take the time to get it. And it's, it's totally okay. Ramble on. Tell me everything. If we need to make another appointment, so you can tell me more. Let's do that. Um, so I take in all the information. I understand it, and then I'm like, okay. In summary, this is what I've this is what I've pulled out. Does this look like like you? Have we missed anything? And then we've got something to work with, and we we kind of flesh it out. Um, but that is the thing that I do. I I, I don't really know how I do it, but it, it is what I do. And uh, that's how we that's how we arise arrive at the words. Yeah, but mainly, but, what I'm doing is I'm filtering for how does this help a client? How does this help a client? How does right, this help your client? Right, what, right. what is this? You know, is this a result or a problem? I'm always filtering for that stuff. Um, yeah. The rest of the stuff is great, and I mean, it can go into content marketing. Some of it can go into the sure, about page. Sure, but sure. Really, the succinct pieces that sell your services are about what you do for your clients. Yeah. Wow. And and I bet the kind of listening you do. I mean, you know, I can tell that you really care about your clients. I mean, your, your process demonstrates that. And um, wow, what, what, what a difference. Um, thank you for, for sharing that. So, okay, let's say that you now have um, done the intake, you've gotten their, their story, their, uh, all the things that they love doing with, with, with people, they want to, you know, the, how they serve people. So now what do you do? Now, now you, you, you send them a summary and now, now what happens? Yeah, I send them a summary, um, often with a with a diagram, a visual, because sometimes oh, uh, when you're talking about complex or complicated yeah. or you have a process, it needs a visual. It needs a Venn diagram or it needs a process arrow or some kind of, you know, um, some kind of a visual to help explain it, uh, which is off really helpful for, for when you're talking to clients um, about what you do is you can, you know, grab a piece of paper and, and uh, draw it out and explain how a process works. So. So there's a visual and then there's some notes. And at that point, um, people can write their copy themselves because I give them all the high points, basically. It's like, here's an overview of what you do. Here's the one sentence summary. Um, here's, you know, here's, you know, the outcomes that your clients are looking for. Here's some notes about the ideal client profile. And they end up with two pages, maybe diagram and some notes. And it's, you know, this is kind of, this is the guide for everything that you ever want to write. It's always going to come back to this because we've you spit it all out and here it is. It's always going to come back to this. And then if they want help with their, you know, actually writing the con the copy of the content, I do that collaboratively. I don't do it for them. I do it with them because it needs to sound like you. Like if it's going to be authentic, it needs to be your words. It needs to sound like you. So I work collaborati co collaboratively kind of copying content coaching to help people I'm so glad together. I'm so glad you said that because I have worked with so many copywriters over the years, um, sometimes for my own stuff, but sometimes as clients or sometimes as par business partners, they have copywriters that I'm interfacing with. And I'll tell you, it's like, I just never, 
Yeah, it has to be in your own voice. You can't have someone write your copy. Like, I mean, you can, of course, people do it all the time, but it's like so obvious to me, this email was from you. This email was from your copywriter, I can tell. You know, it's like, it's like, it's a two different emails. It's like two different voices, two different people writing it. It's like, no matter how close, yeah. So I'm so glad to hear that you do it collaborative with people rather than just like, well, let me just outsource it all to you. So. Thank you for doing that. I mean, first you, you help them create the messaging that becomes clear as a template, but then they do the writing and then you help them with that too. That's, that's amazing. That, that's really helpful. Awesome. Um, so let's, as we complete, uh, tell us about that, the, the kind of the, the, the free classes that you do um, slash business talk show. Tell us about that. Yes, I work. I, I work with a with a partner, Georgie, and she is a she's. A, we jokingly say that I'm I'm boxes and arrows, and she's hearts and flowers. Uh, so my thing is more of the strategic in the words, and hers is helping people figure out exactly what it is that they want. Um, figuring out what their purpose in life is, their values, helping them break through blocks and uh, fears that keep them from moving forward and helping them create really good relationships with people. So our, so we come together and we do this talk show. Our, our thing is the U-shaped business. And we talk about um, self-employed entrepreneurship, figuring out what you you want doing good work in the world, um, having a business that's based around your purpose and, and your values, working with the people that you're here to serve, um, how to connect with them, how to talk to them, overcome your, your stuff, and also my stuff, <laughs> the strategy and the words. And uh, every Wednesday at uh, 9.30, we teach. Uh, we, we teach something and we talk about a subject and uh, we basically just share everything that we know. Um, we we share it all our, our, you know, my perspective is that when you do work with clients, implementation kind of work, helping them do stuff, you can be really free with the information. That's not what they're looking for. They're right. looking for the support. So yeah, we freely looking, give information. That's amazing. And just be clear that these classes that you do, people can join on zoom live. Yep. Right. And it's a, it's, it, that's really cool. That's really cool. Well, Patty, I will be sure to put the link uh, below so folks go check out Patty's, you know, live Zoom classes that are free, uh, very generous, and of course the work that she does. And now you've now you've heard how she does it, and if that's something that you can get some help with, please you know, reach out to Patty. So, thank you, Patty, so much. And also, I just want to also thank you for being such a supporter of my business and things like that. Um, it's been it's been so I'm so grateful for your support as well. So, um, anything else you want to say? Any Words of encouragement as we complete? Um, the work that you do in the world matters. Um, and it's important that when you're called to be a service um, in this kind of way, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, yeah. Mm, thank you so much. Thanks, Patty. All right. You, and uh, you'll find uh, the links below, folks. And uh, go check out Patty Kay's work.